Excellent. Welcome to our talk today. That's called External Traffic Engineering with Cilium. Um, my name is Michael Kashin. I'm the product manager for networking and security at ISO Valent. And, and I'm a Piotr Herboński, a cloud solutions architect at ISO Valent. All right. Let's first have a look at the agenda. And these are the things that we're going to be talking about today. Uh, we'll start with a bit of level setting and explain what do we mean by external traffic and what types of external traffic we're going to be talking about. Uh, we'll then move on to, uh, to talk about external protocols, what can be used to, um, to orchestrate external routing. And then finally, we'll um, talk a little bit about deployment scenarios. We'll cover some of the more what we consider advanced scenarios. And um, maybe even we'll have time for a little bit of the lab if uh, the lab gods are going to be on our side today. Um, we'll see. Right. So um, let's start with the definitions. What do we mean by external traffic? And the very the easiest way to think about it is like it's everything that is not an internal traffic, which still it's quite a bit vague. So we'll uh, try to zoom in a little bit. So firstly, it's the typical ingress traffic, and that is the traffic that is going into the cluster, and that's originated from outside of the cluster. Um, another component of external traffic is the egress traffic. That's kind of the opposite of the ingress. All right, it's the traffic that going outside of the cluster that was originated inside. And whenever, whenever we deal or we design a solution that involves ingress or egress traffic engineering, th these are th some of the problems that we often think about, failover, security, performance, and cost optimization. We'll try to mention, as we go through the scenarios and discuss them, we'll try to mention these uh, problems and how we approach them and how to, how to optimize and solve them. Um, and finally, a few words about traffic engineering, like for people who are not quite familiar with it. It's a, it's a very vague term. I don't think it has a um, proper dictionary definition. It means many things to different people. Uh, but for us specifically, what it's going to mean is that traffic engineering is a, uh, a way to modify the default behavior or default forwarding path between a source and destination. So usually, once you build a Kubernetes cluster, it will be a way the packets will take by default. And this is kind of the standard out-of-the-box way. Traffic engineering is a way to augment or change this behavior to make the traffic go a different way based on some sort of user criteria or user-defined configuration. And, and the first traffic that I'll start explaining about is the ingress. It is by far the most popular type of external traffic that people know. And this is this, one of the things that we'll learn very early on during the Kubernetes journey. It is the traffic that's coming from outside of the cluster. And then we usually have some sort of resource, with, which is either ingress or gateway API compliant implementation. And all the traffic hits that endpoint or those pods and then gets forwarded to one of the backend pods. And it's, um, yeah, depending, depending on the policy and how it's implemented, it can um, go to either all nodes or a subset of the nodes. And generally, traffic engineering in this context refers to the ability to steer the traffic to the most appropriate nodes in a Kubernetes cluster so that they can process and um, send the traffic on back to the backend ports. And one of the examples of ingress traffic engineering is probably the easiest way to understand what we will mean by traffic engineering in this talk is external traffic policy. So it's a, it's a setting that was introduced, I can't remember when, a few years ago, that augments the default behavior of a service. By default, um, with external traffic policy cluster, whenever that service is configured, the external network is expected to send uh, traffic for that service to any node. And any node can receive it and forward it to the backend pod. Uh, the optimization to this rule was the introduction of external traffic policy local, which allows external network to only selectively forward traffic to the nodes that are actually running the pods. 
And the idea was to that that once you when, when you send the traffic, you can preserve the original client IP. You don't have to do matting on the node as, as you receive the traffic and forward it to the pod. But this is probably the easiest and the most gentle introduction into traffic engineering uh, for people who are not quite familiar with it. And it's, al it's also like one of the basic and simplest use cases to understand. Um, but then come the more difficult bits, and this is the egress traffic engineering. Yeah, before we come to the egress, uh, this is a picture we can, which can be complementary to the ingress as well, because ingress traffic requires information which is sent in the reverse direction. What information in the reverse direction? Information about the prefixes we want to reach in the, our Kubernetes cluster. So we need to find a way how to advertise these prefixes outside. So ingress traffic requires information which is sent outside. Reversibly, if we want to reach the destination like this one, 2030113.10, which is egress traffic because we are originating this from inside to the outside, we require the information in reverse direction, which is, again, announcement of uh, prefixes, which is this one, inside from external network to the Kubernetes cluster. So you see this, the complexity is quite difficult, quite huge, because Kubernetes cluster as such is not enough. We need something in between also to manipulate the information about uh, prefixes. It's beyond the scope of Kubernetes, but we need to take, or, take care of this. And with, with isovalent, with Cilium, we are trying to help you out to reach or to simplify this um, announcement of uh, prefixes. So how to reach Kubernetes cluster? The first question, we need to advertise prefixes of the pods or services outside. How to reach a destination? We need to advertise this prefix, which is related to the destination, to the Kubernetes cluster. Typically, the, to, reach the, the, to, to reach a Kubernetes cluster is a simple way because, okay, differently, uh, how to reach destination. It's a simple way because it's enough to advertise a default route, isn't it? Uh, typically, cr the Kubernetes cluster does not require full BGP table. We don't require hundreds of thousands of prefixes. Default route is enough. The different stories, we, if uh, we consider the first question, how to reach a Kubernetes cluster, because Kubernetes cluster have, can have dynamic IP addresses, dynamic pools, um, provider independent pools, IP addresses, which are public IP addresses, which can be advertised through different uh, pro service providers, which can be uh, filtered out by some service providers as well and we cannot enforce that directly in the Kubernetes cluster. What is the impact of that? What can be a trap for the egress traffic, for example? The trap can be asymmetric traffic. In this particular picture, we have a one Kubernetes cluster which is spanned across two sides, but this can be, you know, this can be also multi-cluster environment. With Cilium, you can achieve uh, multi-cluster as well uh, uh, solution, which is spanned across multiple zones in, uh, in particular cloud or multiple uh, uh, areas, multiple regions. In such particular example, if your traffic is going outside, you, are, you don't have guarantee that the return traffic is going via the same path. Why? Because the return traffic it's not looking at the path which was used to reach the destination, but it's looking at the destination IP address, which is actually our source IP address for the egress traffic. So the source IP address is exchanged, swapped with the destination. As an effect, it may occur that the destination will choose a different path to reach our Kubernetes cluster. Okay, so what's the problem with that? The problem is, then, when we are using, uh, for example, stateful firewalls, which is a typical design for enterprise class company, a stateful firewall which is sitting in different regions can have a um, keeping of the status of the connection in each particular site. And as the effect of that, 
for this asymmetric traffic, the traffic will be dropped because the firewall at the bottom side don't understand, don't have such entries in the connection table. So this is quite important to understand the relationship between ingress and egress. Ingress traffic, as Michael mentioned, we are sourcing the traffic, we are originating the traffic from outside to inside, and egress traffic is reverse direction, so we are initializing this traffic from inside to outside. For each of this kind of traffic, we have different components in Cilium, but also in Kubernetes. In Cilium, we are reaching with ingress traffic, we are hitting service kind of components like load balancer, like service cluster IP, like uh, um, port no node port, yes, this kind of IP addresses. But with egress, we can optimize the traffic which is going outside using different component, which is egress gateway. With this component, we can steer the traffic in a better way, in a more optimized way. Why? Because we can decide which side should be used to exit our environment. So comparing egress gateway to, to the situation where we don't use egress gateway at all, let me give the example. Without egress gateway, if we have a cluster composed of hundreds of nodes, each of these hundred nodes can be the exit point for, for this traffic. Whereas with egress gateway, we have just, let's say, two nodes, hefty nodes, which are used to, to, uh, to send the traffic, to use this IP addresses as a source NAT, to translate the IP addresses. Is that it? Right, so let's a little, talk a little bit about how you can achieve traffic engineering and what protocols can you use to interact with what we've been so far referring to as external network. Uh, and one of the easiest and at the same time least flexible approaches to use static routing. Usually it refers to um, either a directly connected prefix uh, on the interface of your, let's say if it's a physical data center, that's going to be your top of the rack switch. If it's a cloud environment, that's going to be the, the subnet of that VPC where the Kubernetes cluster is deployed. And the problem with it is like it, it achieves a lot of this, um, per, per a lot of the functions that we need. It, 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 it establishes reachability from the external network to IPs located within the cluster, but it's very inflexible. And it usually is used only in some corner cases where other approaches cannot be used. Uh, but at the same time, when you talk about the cloud, cloud environment specifically, that is the only tool that we have. Sometimes, not, not sometimes, but for majority of the IS, traditional IS, uh, not taking packet into account, clouds, you cannot use any non-static route protocol to change the direction of the traffic. So that is the only thing that you can have. Um, but there are better solutions if you do have a chance that you can use dynamic routing, which Piotr is going to explain now. Yeah, which is the solution for our previous problem statement for asymmetric traffic, because with BGP, you can not only advertise the prefixes, but you can also decide which site is the primary site where you advertise your prefixes, that's the first point, and which site will have a better attributes. There are several attributes you can use with BGP. We don't manipulate uh, attributes as part of Cilium as at this moment, but still you can decide on the upstream device what will be your policy. So thanks to the BGP protocol, you can decide which site or ingress point will be used actually by external devices. And you can make this traffic more symmetric or fully symmetric. Plus, on top of the BGP protocol, you can use egress gateway to help out to make a decision even more symmetric, even more easier for BGP to make a decision. And uh, just for your reference, this is the co configuration snippet with the example of the configuration for BGP peering. There are several attributes. Some of them are extended already with a newer version. The most important message here is this is pretty simple and standard configuration of BGP, which you can find with any other vendor. So you 
just defined with local, with virtual routers and local ASN, what is your local autonomous system number. You configure the peer ASN, peer address. You can configure both external as well as internal BGP sessions. So depending what are your peer ASN numbers, you can configure both kind of sessions. You can use additional attributes which are related to the optimization, how the BGP session is established and kept alive if there is a failure of one of the neighbors. And what is important from the perspective of advertisement, we have line 15, 16, 17, which explains or mark the traffic, mark services which will be advertised, not to the traffic, actually the services which will be advertised externally. So by service selector, we mark what are the labels taken from services which will be used, which will be identifying our services for advertisement of these IP pools which are associated with these services. And this is short snippet from uh, Cisco CSR router. How does it look like when we advertise the prefix from Cilium? Nothing, nothing new, just the standard BGP prefix received by the standard BGP router. Uh, we have next hop, which is uh, the physical IP address or virtual IP address on, sitting in on the Cilium node and networks, which are, you know, standard things. You can decide whether it's slash 24 or different uh, mask. If you are advertising uh, service IP, it will be rather slash 32, the, so the host route, but you can aggregate them on the BGP level on the upstream device simply. So, so we, we, we also included in the, into this presentation a kind of a laboratory. So if you are ready, you can go to the link. Um, if not, just put the note about this uh, lab. It's a lab which is consisted of um, egress gateway plus BGP advertisement. We equipped, we added additional feature there, which is pre-version 1.16, which is not released yet officially, but we uh, had an agreement to, to give you this feature already. Uh, and you can play with it by advertising, for example, cluster IP as well, which was not, which was not available so far. So going to this link, you can click, you can register. You don't need to put, you know, all, all of the data, but you can just start the lab, okay? Because it takes um, three, five, six minutes uh, roughly to, to spin up all the VMs to instantiate all the components. So we will go back to this uh, shortly, okay? All right, so now we're gonna talk a little bit about deployment scenarios, so something that uh, we've mentioned during the agenda. Um, and we'll, to keep it short, we'll just target the two different scenarios that we've seen quite a lot um, um, our customers and users use. So the first one is gonna be egress gateway high, high availability. availability. Yeah, high, high availability is, uh, is an extension to the egress gateway feature, which is required, of course, to keep everything uh, redundant and uh, healthy if there is a single point of failure. I, uh, I, of course, we cannot afford for the single point of failure, so that's why we have egress gateway high availability. In that particular scenario, we have active standby scenario where uh, we have um, two options of the configuration where we have just one max gateway node, which means just one node can be active. The other is standby. And how we configure the standby, it depends on us. It can have the same IP address or it can have different IP address. In this particular configuration snippet, we can see the same IP address is configured for a failover scenario, which is 20.001. Um, we can also describe this um, failure, failover node by the interface name. So we don't care about the particular IP address but the interface number, which is in this example, Ethernet 1. You can notice that the traffic to the egress gateway is tunneled through the VXLAN and encapsulation, and that's the necessary component of the architecture, because 
in between the worker node and the egress gateway node, there might be routing decision in the underlay, which means the traffic will be forwarded back straight to the internet. We, won't, we want to avoid that. So that's why the traffic must be tunneled to the egress gateway. And the second part of the story is when we are using multiple egress IPs, so we want active-active scenario. In this case, there is load sharing from the worker node of the traffic to, uh, which is distributed across different gateway nodes. All nodes can be active depending on the scenario again. There are three examples in the configuration where, where we have, in the first example, two different IPs because the, there cannot be the same IP address because it, won't be, it would result in the duplication of IPs. Uh, in the second example, we have the equivalent of the previous scenario where we have indication of the interface. We are not deriving, deriving uh, uh, IP address from the configuration, but we are indicating what is the IP, what is the interface where the IP should be taken from. And in the example three, we have even four nodes combined, which can be active, grouped in two groups, okay? So the first group has two gateway nodes and the second group has two gateway nodes. Right. Um, and another feature that we wanted to talk about, uh, which also has um, very interesting application and can be described as a pretty much traffic engineering for egress is the topology where routing. Um, this feature is inspired by a similar feature upstream. I don't know if you're familiar with it. Uh, the topology where it hints or routing, it's an ability to kind of steer the proportionate number of traffic to the right place in your network or to, to the right availability zone. Uh, what we do with this feature is the reverse of that. We can allow ports that are in the in one availability zone to preferably or to try and select the egress that is also based in the same availability zone. And um, typically, it the the reason why we do that is because it I, helps with latency because you don't have to cross the interzone boundaries. But mainly, it also helps with the cost savings because every time you cross uh, the AZ boundary between different zones, there's some cost involved. Whereas if you exit locally, then it becomes a lot cheaper. Um, and for this problem, typically we've had two solutions. One of them is DIY, which we've seen some of the customers do when they write their own controller that relabels pods after they've started because it tracks on which nodes they end up being scheduled on and then labels them with the availability zone label of that node so that they could get selected by the right policy. Uh, but another option is to build a product that has this feature built in, and to, to use the product that has this feature built in. Um, and this is what Silly Migrants Gateway Policy um, can do today. Uh, it's, the, um, it's accomplished through a certain flag called AZ Affinity, and it has several different configurations, which is probably not worth uh, covering in this slide, but just so that you know, it's it's. It's pretty flexible, and um, the way it works is, as I mentioned, when the pod gets scheduled in a particular on a particular node, uh, it, our egress gateway implementation knows that this node belongs to a particular availability zone, and it will try to select the egress that is in the same zone, um, and only when certain conditions are met, where which could be all egress gateways in the zone are. Uh, dead or unhealthy, then only then would it forward the traffic to another availability zone. But and again, this is all very configurable. You can select whichever option you want. And in general, it is a very good example of how to augment the default egress behavior of a traffic from a pod. Um, and back to you, Peter, about the lab. Uh, yeah, so to summarize all these um, features, they are, they are here to, uh, to help you out with engineering, traffic engineering. With egress gateway like, like this one, you can make a policy which allows on the firewall which is sitting in between or somewhere along the path, like on the destination uh, side, 
that the traffic only from 100342 will be allowed to access the port. The direct access, which is initialized by default, which is coming from the Kubernetes kind of configuration, won't be allowed. This is one kind of, uh, uh, you know, simplicity, simplicity or feature which you can use. Additional thing is that, uh, again, with cluster node, which is composed of hundreds of nodes, you will have the situation where the direct access is triggered using hundreds of source IP addresses. Here, with egress gateway, you can have just a couple of these IP addresses. And this la laboratory, um, which, I'm re which we are referring to, is exactly doing that stuff. Um, so if you go to this link, you will, you will uh, reach this in laboratory, which is, by the way, available for you for not just for today. You can do this what, whatever time you, is preferable for you. And uh, during this lab, you will be... I don't think we'll have time because it's still warming up. It's four yeah, minutes, so. we will possibly don't have time at this moment, but uh, I would like to briefly mention that this lab is composed of several different tasks where you can try not only egress gateway, but also you can notice and see uh, what is the advertisement of prefix is all about through the BGP, how this configuration is, uh, is simple. Um, if you have any questions, we are open to that right now. Yeah, we've got like one minute left, so. Just la last comment from our side. All the labs are also available during the KubeCon event and online through this link on the isovalent.com website. Any questions, please? Thanks, Piotr and Michael. Um, I'll take questions. I go to you at the mic if there are any questions so people hear it on the recordings. Calling once, calling twice, lazy, lazy consensus. Um, thanks, Michael and uh, Piotr. Thank